I remember going to Nicaragua. Um, this was maybe, I don't know when it was, 2017, 20, 2017, maybe late, uh, uh, later than that, maybe 2010. I don't know when it was. Long, long time ago, I went to Nicaragua to go visit a friend who was working out there doing some, you know, I think charity work, I'm pretty sure. I'm not really too sure. I think it was charity work. But anyway, I went to visit her and then I also went to do a little bit of quote unquote solo traveling, which was great. Um, she actually gave me the impetus. She kind of kicked me out the ass and basically left me alone for the week without telling me that she was going to leave me alone. And I was basically in the main city, um, Leon, just basically hanging out with, you know, with um backpackers and expats and whatnot and having the time of my life so that was really fun but i do remember bumping into a lot of people who were essentially working remotely and i didn't know that was a thing back then right i didn't know you could do customer service roles marketing roles um uh what you call it uh, product roles um you know content roles editorial roles just from the comfort of your laptop wherever you need to be in the world but the thing was when you try to probe and ask them hey how are you how did you get in this position none of them really went to spill the beans which makes sense if you've got that kind of job and you're able to kind of live in flipping Nicaragua, right? You're not going to then, you know, be willing to be open as to why, how you got that position and how you're able to do it, especially at the age, because, you know, we're all the same sort of age and, you know, you don't want it to be kind of overcrowded. You don't want anybody to step on your toes. You kind of like gatekeep it. So I kind of got it. But then as you go, you know, through life and you go through different jobs, you have to realize, oh, okay, either these people were very senior where you could basically negotiate what you wanted to do in your role. Because that's something people don't realize either. When you're working in places, if you're good at what you're doing and you're an asset and uh, people value your contribution, uh, you can actually negotiate to have different perks in your job that other people can't. Whether it's a company card, whether it's a company car, whether it's um, extended breaks, so, whether it's sabbaticals, whatever it may be, you can negotiate things in your contract or in the way that you work. That would maybe you could then kind of propose and say, hey, if I have this, it's going to allow me to be more productive when I'm at work. People can do it all the time, but it's something you kind of have to shift in your head in terms of thinking you deserve it or something that you can actually ask for, especially if you're doing great work. So it's either that people are really senior or they were in a position that allowed them to do more re remote working. And I think a lot of people have basically woken up to the fact that you could do that nowadays, especially with the prevalence of companies out there that need customer service rep representatives, especially, or customer service reps, sorry who can work around the clock there's you know there's no limit of roles that you can do from the comfort of your laptop if you're willing to do the work if you're willing to dig if you're willing to look around but obviously there is some people within that group in that subset of anti-work who are just lazy they don't essentially they don't really want to work they'd rather just like sponge off the government and um, have no actual hobbies outside of working and just spend all their time on twitter and reddit shit posting that's what some most people want to do and i think not some people i say most people i think most people if you told them they could get away with living on the universal universal basic income ubi which is maybe a thousand to maybe 1500 pounds per month which just about maybe covers most of your expenses if you live sensibly and maybe on you know you add maybe a part-time job on top of that to kind of make up for other things that you want to do maybe like going on holiday buying a car you know going out to eat and whatnot i think most people would have it most people don't want the glitzy crazy life where you're like in the middle of cancun or you're doing whatever people just want to be able to just enjoy whatever their life they got by not having to be present at an office every single day or at, on a shop floor or at a restaurant or at a bar and if you gave them the excuse that they wouldn't have to work they would take it so anti-work is full of these guys and girls who clearly clearly are using the anti-work movement as a sort of um, shield to basically um remove themselves from having any responsibility whatsoever and this interview with fox news basically laid it bare where one of the mods decided to go on there and plead his case regarding anti-work movement and let's just say it did not go well i'm gonna play it now for you <laughs> hilarious is like a work. good work day how many hours is is you know a solid work day in, in your ideal right. society uh Sure. I mean, I think as much as people want, I mean, I personally uh, work, I have, I have like a 20, 25 hour work weeks, which I think is fairly good. Um, so I would like less work hours. Um, and what I do you do, Doreen? Go, oh, I'm a dog walker. A dog walker. <laughs> okay. Yes. 25 hours uh, a week. Yeah. So how old are you? Week. If you don't mind me asking. Sure. I'm 30. You're 30. Okay. <laughs> And is there something you want to do besides being a dog walker? Do you aspire to do anything more than dog walking? Or is that kind of your, your pinnacle? Uh, <laughs> I, I love working with dogs. If I had to do this for the rest of my life, you know, I wouldn't be super complaining. You know, dogs are wonderful animals. Uh, but I'm, I would love to teach. Uh, I would love to, um, teach. you know, uh, work, with, work with people and well, stuff like that. What would that. you yeah. teach, Doreen? Uh, 
a philosophy mostly. Philosophy. Just introduction to philosophy, critical thinking, <laughs> reason, stuff like that. Okay. Well, I would love to take your class, Doreen. I would just be taking notes the whole time. And you know what? A professor is a very similar schedule than something that you're imagining. So I think that actually might, might work perfectly for you. Listen, uh, I think this might not be the greatest idea, but who am I to judge? To each their own, they say. It's a free country. Sure. Not yeah. everything's uh, free, you know. <laughs> but it is a free country. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sure. We've got to run. We got to pay the bills. Absolutely disaster of an interview, right? Absolutely disaster. And of course, you know, the usual rags come out and try and defend it. This is from The Guardian. Like a bully in the schoolyard, Fox News sets its sight on anti work movement. It's not a bully. The real world, most people are thinking the real world. Most people in the real world, if they were given the excuse where they didn't have to work, would take it. But I think most people do get some form of satisfaction out of working. Now, it's not to be on end all. But it does provide some level of structure. It's like a scaff, not scaffolding. Is that like a scaffolding? Maybe it is. Maybe it's a beam in a house. It's something that kind of allows you to maybe do the things that you want to do in and around it. Whether it's going out, whether it's staying in, looking after pets, hanging out with friends, going on holiday, whatever things that you like to do in your spare time, what kind of gives you structure to do it, right? Because uh, how fun would it be to actually watch Euphoria and kind of tap out from society for an hour every Sunday or every Monday morning or every Monday evening if you didn't have a work schedule? You actually got something to look forward to. You go to work in the morning thinking, oh, I'm going to download this. I'm going to torrent this. I've got this saved on my HBO Max, whatever. By the time you come back home or on the way to work, if you want, I see people some doing some people doing it. You can watch the thing on your phone. It actually makes you look forward to your day. You're like, oh, I can't wait to sit down on the train, get my headphones on and watch this series. It's actually a good thing. It actually gives you a, a sense of balance. It allows you to have friends of your own age in a work environment that aren't people that you know from previous walks of life. That's also a good thing. Communication with people. Um, maybe the ability to maybe get promoted. It allows you to have little small goals, achievements you can make a, a, across the, across time. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing, but it's obviously mostly corporations that are working people like, like dogs. They're flipping killing you. They're raking you over the coals. They're pushing you to the extent where it doesn't really make any sense. And then people obviously push back and you know which makes complete sense but not having any work whatsoever or working as a part-time dog walker 20 25 hours a week and then taking you on less hours that's absolutely insane but yeah you know guardians are always going to guardian um let's quickly read a little bit what they say here they said in 2013 the subreddit anti anti-work was born the unemployment for all but not just for the rich tags uh, reads the tagline america was experiencing a mood and change at the time occupy the movie had just hit theaters lodging the eponymous movement in the national consciousness the socialist alternative pie blah 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 born on the moment sorry uh, bandy, uh sorry anti-work offered a space where people could envision their life free from work or at least too much of it anchored by marxist philosophy people used it to commiserate share memes and trade war stories about the horrors of modern day working in america then the pandemic hit laying bare inequalities in, in so inequities long faced by lower wage workers particularly in the united states the subreddit exploded screenshots of recognition text to bosses went viral eat my ass read one memorable text in response to boss who had warned against such impulsive decisions in december users bombarded kellogg's applications as site as they've been launched they replaced to, as, as they launched to replace 1400 striking users with fake applicants as media reports in the great resignation in the wake of the bureau of labor statistics um that 4.5 million americans have left the job in november 2021 an all-time high and to work inch closer to the mainstream now that stat is a bit skewed it's not like those people are resigning most industries haven't recovered from the pandemic and they probably never will so some industries just don't have the ability to hire people right they maybe can hire them on a temporary basis maybe on like a uh on like a zero hour basis but there is no long-term prospects for people in jobs anymore especially if you're somebody working in entry level sometimes you're a medium uh yeah entry to medium level position it's not guaranteed you're gonna have that job forever you're just gonna have to work like i'm doing at the moment and just stack up and hope that it's going to be able to kind of sustain you until whenever that you need to go and do other things but I think one of the good things to come off the back of it, I remember seeing loads of these posters from McDonald's and other fast food chains that kind of responded to the lack of applicants or lack of employees they had in their workforce because people were quitting because it wasn't worth it to go and work for McDonald's for $8 an hour if you were going to get a stimulus check. It just didn't make any sense. Especially if you're going to go take that stimulus check and maybe go and buy a couple of TVs or a PlayStation and flip that. Why would you go work in McDonald's for £8 an hour or $8 an hour? 
cool makes complete sense but what they didn't well in terms of reaction is that they then decided to up the hourly rate which was crazy because what it told you was that they could have done it anyway but they chose not to because they didn't have a reason to right they didn't have any reason to put the hourly wage higher so they let you you know suffer on ten dollars and i remember one post i saw i think it went up to about 18 or 20 dollars per hour working at mcdonald's which is absolutely insane considering the level of work you're going to do and how um monotonous it is and how easy it is to give you 20 dollars an hour especially if you don't mind doing that kind of job it's pretty good work um, of course you're gonna to have to suffer from all the world star hip-hop moments and you know having the dregs of society walking in and out of your establishment but if you're able to keep your head down and just work there for a few months you can stack up a nice healthy amount of money make sure your cb has not got many big gaps of unemployment because of course that's not going to look good because i'd imagine even though it's a pandemic there'll be some companies out there some absolute horrible people who even though people are finding it hard to find jobs would actually um what's that word called would actually look down upon you if you had big gaps in your work experience even though they know your industry has suffered for you know greatly due to, due to the pandemic i'm pretty sure they exist um so you know if you're able to work in a supermarket work in a restaurant for the time being and kind of get your money up why not so it's actually been a i think it's actually been a net positive this kind of thing has happened but of course you know people like guardian are always going to fight for the um the right to be lazy and not do anything it makes complete sense when they're paying their editors like 40 grand a year to write flipping crazy dumb hit pieces on podcasts it doesn't make any sense and then vice came out also and said something um they said okay what the fuck is going on with the empty work subreddit and fox news ambush it wasn't an ambush it was just a terrible interview and again come are we allowed to say in society now can we not just say hey you did a bad job is that okay it's not you know we don't want to bully the kid we don't want him to like you know get depressed or do anything bad we're just going to say you did a terrible job you went on there to try and advocate for your subreddit to try and advocate for your community to try and present an alternative way to maybe look at work to look at employment and you got mocked because you are a joke you live in your mom's basement clearly at 30 years of age and you dog walk and you want to work less hours than 25 hours a week which i think some people said it wasn't 25 hours and then there's stories coming out about him being you know a little bit of a p-e-r-v which is absolutely you know right on the button there but come on you did a bad job you didn't represent yourself well it is what it is dust yourself off again and come again but people are so sensitive these days um a quarter said da, 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 the fox news thing fox um ford explained that people in the anti-work movement still want to do things but they want to do things where they feel rewarded and in good spot in life and where the job respects them which is sounds like a participation trophy it sounds like everyone gets a star everyone gets a lollipop like nah the interview was typical a uh, fox news ambush uh ford made reasonable clear arguments no he didn't many members of anti-work want but what uh waters or waters invited her only to ridicule the note that's a her Oh, this person meant to be trans. Rotted. Okay. Cool, man. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. Um, but what has invited her only to include uh, the notion that anyone will be against working, um, not to have a sub, sorry, was that a substantive interview? She had wandered into a den of wolves and didn't realize anything bad was going to, uh, was happening even as she was beginning being eaten alive. To what has Ford was everything conservatives have been warning against the work lifters who are destroying America and want free things from the government. Yeah, but there, this is also an extreme. This, I, I guess, so some people on the left, I would say I'm, I'm pretty left leaning meaning i would say this person is an extreme and not the best advocate or the best ambassador or the best orator to describe anything that concerns anti-work they shouldn't be anywhere near a video camera at all they should be in the doldrums in the dungeon pit living in their mom's basement modding the anti-work subreddit not going on fox news and trying to um you know have a tit for tat with a very experienced um news anchor it's not going to work you're always going to make to look like a fool um says so i encourage people to be lazy what was asked <laughs> i think laziness is a virtue in society where people want to be productive 24 7 ford responded later what has asked ford who said she is 30 years old dog water if she aspires to be anything more than a dog walking or is that your pinnacle when ford mentioned that she'd like to teach philosophy a field of study likened to the mythical underwater basket weaving that conservatives are endlessly memed as being expensive useless and without job prospect waters literally laughed but it is so it should be a joke why should somebody who hasn't got their own life in order be teaching philosophy? Even though that should be maybe the perfect person for philosophy, especially nowadays, people just talk out their asses, myself included, but I'm not giving you advice. I'm not trying to lead you anywhere or guide you to anything or ask you for funds to go on my course that's going to lead you to this. Nah, but most people do do that. So I understand that, but it is a bit of a joke. You can't have your own life not in order and then decide to take up philosophy. For what reason? Who's listening to you? 
what are you philosophizing about? Like, get out of here. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. People should, you should be laughed and mocked that when you, you should be laughed and mocked when you do a bad job. You should be ridiculed and pointed at when you say something dumb. And the key to it is to learn from it and come back and be better. This idea that people should just pretend like you didn't say the dumb thing is ridiculous. It continues. The Fox News interview was an inflection point. So inflection point of the anti-work subreddit, which went from a small community to one of the fastest growing subreddits and now a 1.7 billion members. Um, billion, million. Uh, principally, these members have different views on what it means to be anti-work. Some of the subreddit want to be advocate for universal basic income, which I think is a pretty spot on. Some rail against capitalism not get a fan of that and some just hate hate their city hate, hate their shitty bosses um most want to strengthen the organized labor movement and some just want to be paid decent wage and treated with respect i would go for universal basic income personally for me and have uh, a decent wage and be treated with some level of respect that should be no level of respect is obviously earned but then you obviously can't force it on people but i think if you're able to have people give people some form of universal basic income maybe increase the hourly wage on some of these menial jobs it will make people put up with a lot because i've been in workplaces where you've hated the person you work for but because they pay you pretty decently you will put up with a lot of shit you really will but if you're paid pittance you're going to bounce to somewhere else that even if they pay you a pound extra or maybe it's an hour further out from where you're working it will give you the peace of mind and nothing nothing you can't put any value on that sort of stuff that like peace of mind you really can't it continues to say most viral posts on a subreddit over the last few months have been from workers who have told their bosses to fuck off people calling for solidarity during unionization efforts and strikes and people who have amounted sorry uh, automated their jobs and use their free time to pursue their hobbies or their post about worker exploitation it's funny they're talking about worker exploitation on vice considering they flipping organized that festival in saudi arabia right they don't really have the best working conditions over there, innit? Imagine trying to spearhead an anti-work movement in flipping Saudi Arabia. What do you think MBS will say about that? But yeah, clearly the worst advocate ever when it comes to anti-work movement. Didn't do a good job at it, uh, at presenting it or articulating it in any sort of way. I still think it's a really um, interesting argument to have. I still think 4-Hour Workweek is probably the best model or idea around it. You can maybe build off of the back of that and use that as some sort of structure to basically frame how you approach the anti-work movement. But essentially, we're all doing it now at the moment, especially if you're working from home, especially if you have the ability to maybe travel into your office maybe twice per week or maybe once per week. That's essentially anti-work because it opens up your day, opens up your week to do the things that you actually want to do. But this idea that everyone wants to sit on their ass and just collect money from the government, that's insane. Some of us actually do um, get some level of satisfaction from being to, going to work, doing our task, being a useful member of a team, connecting with other team members, meeting customers, you know, whatever it may be, we get some satisfaction out of that. And I think you shouldn't be looked down upon as some sort of capitalist pig because you enjoy the place that you work at. That doesn't really make any sense for me, but you know, what do I know?